Good morning, everyone. It's Monday, October 14th. I'm Jasmine Anderson. A school bus driver is accused of raping a teenage student. A Newsday investigation discovered he had been accused of sexually abusing a minor before he got the job as a driver. Sherry Einhorn has a story you'll see only in Newsday. This is Giovanni Campos. He's a former bus driver for a private company from Queens that was contracted to transport students in the Valley Stream Central High School District. He's accused of raping a 16-year-old Valley Stream student last year. According to a Newsday investigation, Campos had been fired nearly a decade ago from a previous job as a corrections officer at Rikers Island for an inappropriate relationship with a minor. During a disciplinary hearing in 2015, an administrative judge recommended Campos should be terminated from his position. Because he was never convicted, the case was sealed and the charges were eventually dropped, uh, he did not have to disclose it by law. Uh, however, he did have to meet the requirements for the case to be uh, sealed. And among these requirements was the sex offender program that he attended for six months. So how did he end up driving a bus filled with kids in Valley Stream? That's what parents want to find out. That's horrible. That's really horrible. I don't know why they, these people hired that type of people. According to state education department regulations, anyone applying to be a school bus driver is required to submit three letters of reference to the district attesting to their moral character. The district superintendent is then supposed to sign this approval form. Newsday filed a Freedom of Information request to try and find out whether the process was followed correctly. We requested from the school district um, any and all documents pertaining to Giovanni Campos, including three references that he should have provided to the school district when he was hired, and the uh, school superintendent's approval. And uh, these documents were not provided. Here's the application Campos filled out for employment with the Cheese Bus Company. As you can see, there's nothing listed for recent employment and the entire reference section was left blank. Also, on the application from the bus company to the State Department of Motor Vehicles to get Campos a bus driver's license, previous employment is again blank. A lawyer for Cheese Bus tells Newsday the company complied with state law regarding background check requirements. The Pennsylvania Department of Education requires all employers and applicants to fill out this disclosure form. Basically, it asks if the applicant has ever been the subject of an investigation, told to resign, or been terminated from a position because of allegations of sexual misconduct or abuse. New York does not have the same law. They're supposed to be background checked properly because, you know, he said, this is the kid, this is our future, the kid's our future. The criminal case against Campos is still pending. He pleaded not guilty and is currently behind bars. There's also a civil lawsuit against him, the bus company, the school district, and Nassau County. The district superintendent told Newsday the district no longer uses the cheese bus company and that the district does not comment on pending litigation. In Valley Stream, I'm Sherry Einhorn for Newsday TV. Sherry, thank you. To read more about this story, click Get More below the Newsday TV video box on our homepage. People in the town of Hempstead may be facing a double-digit tax hike. The town board wants to increase taxes by more than 12 percent. It would be the biggest town tax hike in more than a decade. If it goes through, the plan would boost town spending to more than $549 million. There will be public hearings on the plan tomorrow. Today is the 23rd birthday of Hamas hostage and Plainview native Omer Nutra. His friends and family are trying to make sure he's not forgotten. Yesterday, dozens packed the Hamas Middle School gym in Manhattan for a basketball game honoring Nutra. Many wore blue and white shirts that read, Free Omer. Omer is there. He's alive and he's waiting to be rescued. And we are wearing his shirts and the whole school and his teammates from his school are here to play together and make sure people don't forget. Nutra was taken hostage by Hamas during the October 7, 2023 attack on Israel. Italian Americans are marking Columbus Day today, while many others are honoring America's indigenous roots. Yesterday, spectators flocked to Huntington for its Columbus Day parade. 
in a celebration of Italian heritage, culture, and contributions made to the U.S. Marchers wore ceremonial costumes and played drums and long trumpets. I feel like it means to be sort of part of the community and, uh, you know, help giving music to the people. And I feel like music is, like, really important. It expresses emotions, and I feel like it makes you a little happier. Now, Columbus Day is also seen as a day that marks the country's legacy of colonization. And in 2021, the day was also recognized as Indigenous Peoples Day by President Joe Biden. It recognizes and honors the Native people who already lived in North America. Now to sports. Talk about a rough start. The Mets were crushed by the Dodgers in Game 1 of the National League Championship Series. Mets beat writer Tim Healy looks at what happened and what lies ahead for the team. For at least a day, the Mets were a mess. They lost game one of the NLCS to the Dodgers Sunday night, 9-0, to zero, and it really was not even that close. Kodai Senga started. The Mets were hoping to get three innings from him. He gave them less than half that. He had nothing, non-competitive pitches, in the words of manager Carlos Mendoza. In one and a third innings, he gave up three runs, and the Mets had to go pretty much right to their bullpen. It got even uglier from there. The good news for the Mets is that if they can win Monday, game two, then that's a split of the first two games, and that's really all they were looking for or needed before the series shifts to New York beginning Wednesday. Sean Manaya will pitch for the Mets on Monday. He was their best starting pitcher, most reliable starting pitcher throughout the regular season, so they like their chances. From Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, I'm Tim Healy for Newsday TV. Hopefully they bounce back, Tim. Thank you. Well, the Yankees are getting ready to start their series with the Guardians at the stadium. Beat writer Eric Boland has more on what the Yankees are facing. Monday night, game one of the ALCS Yankees and Guardians right here at Yankee Stadium. Yankees, of course, trying to get into the World Series for the first time in 2009. They are heavy favorites against the Guardians, winners of the AL Central this year. But uh, in terms of matchups, uh, a little bit tricky from the standpoint that, uh, yes, the Yankees should win this series, but the Guardians have, and they've had it all season long, the best bullpen in the entire sport it's probably on balance been about as dominant as they're as they've been they got you know four or five guys down there that are you know high leverage and they're a team that obviously can and likes to shorten the game they're a good team i mean they're the they have their record and they play the way they did for a reason the whole season so um they obviously have a really good staff and i think complete lineup so it's gonna be a tough series it's a formidable lineup, and it's, it's very good. I mean, they wouldn't be in the ALCS for no reason. It's, it's going to be a fun challenge and, you know, a, a lot of respect for, for that Cleveland team. If the Guardians starting pitching is able to take these games into the late innings, you would say that their advantage switches slightly in favor of the Guardians. One thing about the Yankees bullpen, it's been up and down this season, really up in the early part of the year, down in the middle part, and then it's been up and way up September and into October. The Yankees bullpen unscored upon uh, in their division series victory over the Royals. So this really could be a seven-game series, and it could come down to a battle of bullpens, in which case you would say advantage Guardians, but advantage to the Yankees in pretty much every other category. Reporting from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, this is Eric Boland for Newsday TV. Checking out your hyperlocal forecast, you're in for a mix of sun and clouds and cooler temps today. Checking out your day planner, a mostly sunny day today, highs in the 60s. Tomorrow a little different, partly cloudy, highs in the upper 50s. And here's a look at your seven day forecast. Long Island weather is brought to you by PTRC. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Thank you so much for watching.